Chapter 25, The Punishment of the Red Goblins. It's certainly time we dealt with those red goblins, said Mr. Whiskers, the chief elf, wiping his long beard with a yellow handkerchief. He had dropped plum juice down it. And just at that moment, there came a great surprise. A deep voice behind them said, Oh, oh here's a nice little company. What about coming back with me to wizard land and doing a few jobs? Everyone turned in dismay. They saw a curious figure above them, leaning down from a big branch. It was a wizard whose green eyes blinked lazily like a cat's. <gasps> it's the mighty one, the wizard, said Moonface, and he got up to bow, for a mighty one was as mighty as his name. Everyone did the same. Who is he? whispered Fanny. He is the most powerful wizard in the whole world whispered back Silky. He's come down the ladder so that the, so that means the land of red goblins has gone and the land of wizards has come. They are always on the lookout for people to come work for them in their land. And I suppose Mighty One has come down to look for some people to work for him. Well, I'm not going to work for a wizard, said Fanny. You won't, said, Wiz said Silky. He's not a bad fellow. He won't take anyone who doesn't want to go. It's good training for a fairy who wants to learn magic. Mighty One blinked his eyes slowly and looked at the little crowd on the branches before him. I need about a hundred people to come back with me, he said. Who will come? Nobody said a word. Moonface got up and bowed again. Your Highness, he said. We, none of us want to leave the Enchanted Wood, where we are very happy. You may perhaps find others who would like to go back with you. We beg you not to take any of us. Well, said the wizard, sliding his green eyes from one person to another, I haven't much time. My land will swing away from the faraway tree in about an hour. Can you get me all of the people I want? If you can, I will not take you. Everybody looked worried, but Joe jumped up with a beaming face. Your Highness, Your Highness! Would red goblins do for you to take back with you? Excellently, said the mighty one. They are quick and obedient, but goblins would never agree to come with me. They belong to their own land. Moonface, what's his name, and the saucepan man all began to talk at once. Mighty one flipped up his hand and they stopped. One at a time, said the wizard. So Moonface spoke. Sir, he said, we have about a hundred goblins boxed up in the middle of this tree. They tried to take us prisoner. It would be a very good punishment for them if we gave them to you to take away to your land. Mighty One looked astonished. A hundred goblins? That is very strange. Explain. So Moonface explained. Mighty One was most interested to hear about the fight. We'll all go down to the bottom of the tree and let the goblins out one by one, said Joe. Come on. What a shock for them when they see the wizard. So they all trooped down the tree and the bright rays of the rising sun. Really, it was most exciting. They came to the trap door at the foot of the tree. Behind it, they could hear a lot of shouting and quarreling and pushing. Get away! Don't push! You're squashing me! Moonface unbolted the trap door and opened it. Out shot a red goblin and flew on a green cushion of moss. He picked himself up, up blinked in the bright sunlight, and then turned to run. The mighty one tapped him with his wand and he stood still. He didn't move. He looked scared when he saw the wizard. One by one, the red goblins tumbled out of the trap door and were tapped by the wizard. Twenty, ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty. They came shooting out of the trap door, surprised and frightened, sliding gradually down the slippery slip as one after the other slid from the trap door. Fanny giggled. It was a funny sight to see. It's a very good punishment for those bad goblins, she said to Silky. They came to let down the ladder to trap you, and now someone else has trapped them and is taking them back to his land. The red goblin stood in a sulky row, quite unable to run away. Quick, march, said the wizard, when the last one slid out of the trap door, and up the tree went the sulky goblins. It was no use trying to escape. The wizard had put a spell on their legs, and they had to go up to the top of the tree, through the big white cloud, and into Wizardland. Jolly good riddance of bad rubbish, said Joe. My word, what an exciting night we've had. I did enjoy it. Isn't it cold, said the saucepan man, shivering. Cold, cried Bessie and Fanny, who were feeling really hot in the morning sun. Why, it's as warm as can be. It's because he hasn't got his kettles and saucepans hung around him as usual, said What's-His-Name. I expect they feel like a coat to him, poor old sauceman. I don't like the look of him without his saucepan, said Fanny. He doesn't look right. Can't we collect them for him? They're on the ground and all about the tree. So they began to collect the saucepan man's belongings, and he was very pleased. They hung his kettles on him and put his saucepans all around him with a special one for his hat. 
Some of them were dented and bent, but he didn't mind a bit. There, said Fanny, pleased. You look like yourself now. You looked horrid without all your saucepans on, like a snail without its shell. I've never had a bell, said the saucepan man. Shell, I said, said Fanny. Smell, said the saucepan man, looking round. I can't smell anything at the moment. What sort of smell? Nice or nasty? Shell, not smell, said Fanny patiently. Oh, shell, what shell, said the saucepan man. But Fanny had forgotten about what she had said and shook her head and laughed. Never mind, she shouted. We are glad you look like yourself again. We really must go, said Joe. Mother will be up and wondering whatever has happened to us. Oh, dear, I do feel sleepy. Come on, girls, they said. Goodbye to all the tree dwellers and set off through the enchanted wood. Silky went back to her house in the tree, wondering what had happened to her clock, which hadn't joined in the fight at all. It had been fast asleep. Moonface went back to the tree, yawning. What's-his-name and Saucepan Man climbed back so tired they fell fast asleep before they reached their hole and had put safely in the corner of a broad branch by the angry pixie in case they fell down. Dame Washalot went back, making up her mind to not do washing that day, and soon there was peace in the tree, and only snores of what's-his-name could be heard. Far away up in the tree in the land of wizards, the red goblins were working hard. Ah, they had... Gotten a good punishment, hadn't they? They wouldn't be in such a hurry to catch other people in the future. The three children got home, and their mother stared at them in surprise. You're up early this morning, she said. I thought you were still in bed asleep. Fancy, getting up and going out for a walk before breakfast like that. How sleepy the children were that day, and dear me, didn't they go to bed early that night? No more wandering through the enchanted wood and up the faraway tree for me tonight, said Joe as he got in his bed. I vote we don't go there for a long time. It's getting too exciting. But it wasn't long before they went again, as you will see. Chapter 26, A Plan for Bessie's Birthday. A week later, it was Bessie's birthday. She was very excited because Mother said she might have a little party. We'll ask all our friends in the faraway tree, she said. Do you think we'd better, said Joe doubtfully. I don't think Mother would like Dame Washalot or Mr. Whiskers or the angry pixie. Well, we can't very well ask some and not others, said Bessie. The ones we left out would be very hurt indeed. It's awkward, said Fanny. We'd better go tell Moonface and Silky and ask them what to do. But Mother wouldn't let the two girls go off with Joe that day. She said there was a lot of ironing to do and that they must help. Oh, bother, said Fanny to Joe. They'll have to go alone, Joe, and ask Moonface and Silky what we ought to do about our party. Don't be too long or we'll be worried about you. And please, don't go climbing up into any strange land without us. Don't worry, said Joe. I'm not going to visit any more lands at the top of the faraway tree. I've had enough adventures to last me for the rest of my life. He set off, and he ran through the enchanted wood, and came to the faraway tree. It was a hot afternoon, and not many little folk were about. It seemed almost too hot to climb the tree. Joe whistled. The little red squirrel popped down from the tree and looked at him, chewing an acorn all the while. Leap up to the top of the tree and ask old Moonface if he'll drop me down a rope with a cushion at the end and haul me up, squirrel, said Joe. It's too hot to go clamoring all the way up. The squirrel bounded lightly up the tree, and soon a rope with a fat cushion tied to it came slipping down the tree. Joe caught hold of it, and he sat astride on the cushion and tugged the rope. It began to go up the tree, bumping into the branches as it went. It was a funny ride, but Joe enjoyed it. He waved to the angry pixie who was sitting outside his house eating pop biscuits, and he stared at Joe in surprise, and then grinned when he saw who it was. The owls were asleep in their homes. Mr. What's-His-Name was awake for once and fell out of his chair in alarm when he suddenly saw Joe swinging up through the air, bumping into the boughs. When he saw it was Joe, he was so pleased that he fell off his off his branch onto the saucepan man who was snoozing in a chair just below. Ouch, said the saucepan man, startled. What's the matter? What are you lumping on me for? I'm not, said what's-his-name. Look, there's Joe. Joe, I don't want to go, said the saucepan man, settling down again. Don't be so restless. I said there's Joe, roared what's-his-name. Where, said the saucepan man in surprise, looking all around. But by that time, of course, Joe was far away up the tree, laughing over funny what's-his-name and dear old saucepan. Joe's gone now, said what's-his-name. You didn't look in time. Talk in rhyme, said saucepan, surprised. Whatever for? What's-his-name gave it up climbed back to his chair and shut his eyes. Soon his snores reached Joe, who was far above, hoping that Silky would see him and go up to Moonfaces to talk to him. He forgot to look out for Dame Washalot's water, but he but it missed him nicely, splashing down heavily on poor old what's-his-name, making him dream that he was falling out of a boat into the sea. 
Silky did see him and waved. She climbed the tree quickly to go up to Moonface's, and by the time she got there, Joe had just arrived and was getting off the cushion. Hello, said Moonface and Silky, very pleased to see him. Where are Bessie and Fanny? Joe told him. He told him that about Bessie's birthday, too, and her difficulty about how many people she should ask. We'd like everyone, said Joe, but Mother wouldn't like some of them, we are sure. What shall we do? I know, I know, said Silky, clapping her hands suddenly. Next week, the land of birthdays comes to the top of the faraway tree, and anyone who has a birthday can go there and give the most wonderful party to all of their friends. Oh, what wouldn't it be lovely? Last time the birthday land came, nobody had a birthday, so we couldn't go. But this time we can, because Bessie could ask for all of us. It sounds good, said Joe, but I didn't really want to go into any strange land again, you know. We always seem to get mixed up in strange adventures. So far, we've always escaped all right, but we might not another time. Oh, no harm can come to you in the land of birthdays, said Moonface at once. It's perfectly wonderful land. You must come. It really is, an, is a chance you mustn't miss. All right, said Joe, beginning to feel excited. I'll tell the girls when I go back. And we'll tell everyone in the tree, and Mr. Whiskers and his elves too, said Silky. Bessie would like everyone to go, wouldn't she? Oh, yes, said Joe. What happens, though? I mean, do we have to arrange about tea or anything? And what about a birthday cake? Fanny was going to make one for Bessie. Tell her not to, said Silky. She'll find everything she wants up in the birthday land. My word, we are lucky. Fancy someone really having a birthday just as birthday land comes along. Bessie's birthday is on Wednesday, said Joe. So we'll go up the tree then. I'd better go back and tell the girls now. I said I wouldn't be long. Have a toffee shock, said Mr. Moonface, holding out a bag. No, thank you, said Joe. I'd rather have a pop biscuit. So they sat and munched the lovely pop biscuits and talked about the exciting time they had with the red goblins. Now, I really must go, said Joe, and he got up, chose a red cushion, and said goodbye to Silky and Moonface and shot off down the slippery slip. Joe thought he really could do that all day. It was such a lovely feeling. He flew out of the trap door at the bottom and landed on the moss. He got up and ran off home. The girls were pleased to see him back so soon. When they heard about the birthday land, they were tremendously excited. Ooh, said Bessie, going red with joy. I'm lucky. I wonder what will happen. Do you suppose there will be cake for me? Rather, said Joe, and lots of other things too, I expect. We shall have to tell mother, said Fanny. I wonder if she will go with us. Mother didn't seem to mind. I expect it's just some sort of birthday joke your friends in the woods are playing on you, she said. Yes, you can go if you like. Our cottage is really too small for a very large party. I shall wear my best dress, said Bessie, happily. The one mother got me last week with the blue sash, but mother wouldn't let her. No, she said firmly. You will go all in your old clothes. I remember quite well what you looked like when you got off to tea with the funny friends of yours, the old saucepan, that funny friend of yours, the old saucepan man. I certainly shall not allow any of you to wear nice things next Wednesday. Bessie was nearly in tears. But mother, I can't go to my own birthday party in old clothes, she said. But it was no good. Mother said they could wear old clothes or not go at all. So there was no help for it. I don't know what everyone will think of us going to the birthday land in our oldest thing, said Joe gloomily. I have a good mind not to go. But then Wednesday afternoon came and they all thought differently. Old clothes or not, they meant to go. Come on, said Joe. It's time we went to the land of birthdays. Tomorrow we will read chapter 27, the land of birthdays. And we have three chapters left in this book, 27, 28, and 29. Tomorrow we will read 27 and 28. And on Thursday, our last day of school, we will read chapter 28.